couple of quick notes. Uh, about an hour from now, we are going to be joined by a guest who is going to share with us his thoughts on the federalization of law enforcement. That would mean a national police force that would take over all law enforcement duties at the local level, the county level, and the state level, and what that could mean to you as an Idahoan. And there might be some concerns there that a nationalized police force could get a little out of hand. You know, the the, the, the abbreviation uh, Gestapo is just stands simply for German state police. Now, we're not making any comparisons as to what would happen if this if this did come down, but I just wanted to share that. The guest will have some more details. That just after the 9 o'clock news this morning. Bill Colley with you on Top Story 45. About eight minutes now after 8 o'clock, and I want to thank you for joining us on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio 1310.com. Also, in about 30 minutes, we'll be joined by the leader of, a, of the Boy Scouts in this area, and he's got some news about some upcoming events. Hope to uh, hope to spend about 15 minutes with him and really dig into some other issues as well, and that's on the way if you have some time a little bit later. Well, I would hope you'd stick around for the entire two hours. I do realize, though, that sometimes people have other appointments and schedules they have to keep. But I wanted to open the show today on something that I happened to come across in my uh, internet searches over the last couple of days. There was a fellow who was a, who was a, gaining a lot of traction in, the, in Great Britain, and his name is Paul Weston. Mr. Weston is with something called Liberty Great Britain, and he's been invited recently to speak all over Europe, including Denmark. You're going to hear a few of his comments from that country in just a moment. Why is this happening? Well, because Europe is... is is teetering. I mean, it's being crushed under the weight of a migrant crisis, uh, which might bear some similarities to what we may see eventually in the Magic Valley, or what we have coming already to the Magic Valley. So I thought this morning we would open up the program, and I'd share with you a few of the thoughts of this man, and try and apply that to your own communities here in the Magic Valley as we are preparing for what could become a flood of what are called refugees from the civil war in Syria. This is Paul Weston speaking in Denmark, and he's blaming what he calls a traitor class for Europe's migrant crisis. And one example of this is a a guy called Peter Sutherland, who is the United Nations Chief Migration Officer. And he has said that in order to achieve total political control over the European Union nations, they will use mass immigration and multiculturalism to destroy the nation states destroy the nation states. And this is a guy who actually works at the United Nations. This is, and, and, and Mr. Weston is not making this up. We should also note that the refugee resettlement programs, there's a long line behind the local office here in Twin Falls. And you know what? The people who staff the local office probably have really big hearts, think they're doing the right thing, think this is what we have to do, uh, think that, that you know God will favor us if we do it well, those who believe in God. But ultimately, the people who, who've been drawing all of this up for the last several decades at the United Nations, they may have vastly different goals. And according to Mr. Weston, the politically correct, and, and that's, their, that's what they've replaced religious faith with, is political correctness. He says they have other goals, and they are very shrewd. Now, this traitor class, I call them, they are using race as a weapon against us. Now, if you use something as a weapon against a large group of people, you need to disarm them so they can't fight back. If they were using tanks against us, they would make sure we had no access to anti-tank weapons. Because they're using race against us, they are using the best weapon they know how to take away our only means of defense, which is to accuse us of being racists. The other day I happened to be online and, and I got into a debate, God knows why, with a Muslim fellow back in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area, and he was going on and on calling me a racist, and I finally said, so okay, what race are Muslims? He seemed a little bit shocked by that question because, well, some are Arabs, some are Asians from Southeast Asia, some are Pacific Islanders, some are from uh, Central Africa. Uh, some are from uh, northern Africa in the desert. They come from a variety of different races. And then he started rambling on about Zionism. And with that, I said, well, then who is the racist in this conversation? You see, that's, 
that's what we're going to be dealing with a lot more of in coming weeks when this community has that population expand. It's 812. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Paul Weston, again, he is with Liberty Great Britain speaking at a conference in Denmark. He went on to say that there could be a defense against the politically correct. Don't let them do it. There is nothing racist about wanting to preserve your country and your culture and your heritage. And if they use this word to try and deride you and make you fearful, laugh at them. It is no longer a word that means anything in the modern context. I happened to be listening to one of Weston's videos over the weekend, and he made a great comment. Just short and sweet, he said, patriotism is not racism. And yet today, we're dealing with a great many people in the the media elites, and government elites, and academic elites, who are trying to convince us of just that. He went on to tell the story about British school children whose ancestors built the greatest empire the world has ever known. It covered what? At one point, two-fifths of the globe, if not more. And he, he explains that they're going to school now and they're being taught. Now, you see, in liberal la-la land, when someone's feelings are hurt or we belittle their culture or their background or we give them an inferiority, or inferiority complex, that's considered wrong. Unless, of course, you do it to uh, white males. Little, little white boys in school, we've got to convince them that they're obviously all wrong. And here's my question for you. Does this fellow have a good point? Take a listen to this last comment. And political correctness was never designed as some lovely milk toast ideology to make people behave nicely to each other. It was done to destroy the very foundations of Western civilization. Who built Western civilization? It was European, Christian, heterosexual males primarily. Who are the main (laughs) objects of hatred as per political correctness? White, Christian, heterosexual, married males. You've heard it on this program, and you've likely heard it on other programs as well. I was saying just last week, the reason that you see no other Muslim countries taking in any of these refugees or perhaps migrants is because the plan really seems to be to send them into Europe and into North America to see what they can destroy culturally. And yet they're working hand in glove with the United Nations in this situation, almost as if the folks at the UN, the phrase used, the most famous phrase I think used by uh, Lenin, the founder of uh, of modern communism in Russia, which became the Soviet Union, was useful idiots. But apparently they have found a great many of those sitting at the United Nations in New York and in Geneva, where it has its, its, its headquarters. It's 815. Bill Colley with you. 45 still this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Meanwhile, Pravda on the Snake River has a story today. A controversial Christian pastor, best known for preaching what he calls the dangers of Islam, is coming back to Twin Falls. You can tell that they're shaking in their boots about this. Sharam Hadian will speak at the Canyon Crest Dining and Events Center at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday, September 30th. They don't mention that he's got a couple of other appearances, so I'll do that myself. On September 28th, he is going to be at Calvary Chapel in Buell. That's at 1004 Burley Avenue, September 28th. You mark that down on your calendar if you live in the Buell area. He'll be appearing at 7 p.m. On September 29th, he's spending several days in this area. September 29th, he's going to be in Jerome at the Magic Valley Evangelical Free Church. September 29th in Jerome, Magic Valley Evangelical Free Church. That's at 821 East Avenue H. That starts at 7 p.m. But the story in in, in the uh, Pravda on the Snake River at the very bottom of it says, a pro-refugee center group has also formed. Giving the impression that they're equal sides here. You, let's let let's let's ask this newspaper to use its great vast resources. It would never say it didn't have them to actually go out and do a poll in this community. Now we, we'd have to ask if they would actually report it correctly, but let's ask them to go out and do a poll in this community. How many people support this refugee center? Because we we have a story here that the that the committee to uh, to end this refugee center has actually put together and and revised its effort to bring this to a ballot measure next May. 
But since I don't think it's ever going to be uh, binding and, and it likely will be shot down again by people in government, let's just do a simple poll. Let's find out. I mean, it's, a, it's up or down. Do you support this center or not? Yes or no? Simple as that. So the end of the story there saying, well, a pro-refugee uh, center group has formed. Yeah, there's all of the usual, you know, have leftist gathering will travel. If you're going to have somebody out there screaming about Native American rights, they'll show up for that. If you're going to have somebody out there screaming about dope legalization, they'll show up for that. If you're going to have somebody out there screaming against war, you know the crowd that always came out and said that Bush must go? They vanished, by the way, after Mr. Obama became president. They used to always demonstrate at all of your local military installations, guard units, reserve units, and the like. You know, have, have, have leftist cause, will travel is probably the best way to put it. So they formed a group. But my guess is it is it is a very small organization. When I started this program back in January, I had a caller one day say, look, he said, I, I may not be exaggerating this. He said, there might be half a dozen Democrats in all of Twin Falls County. Who knows? Perhaps in all of the Magic Valley and beyond. It's 818. Bill Colley with you this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Also, my friend Jim Corey, he is a vice president of the National Association of Chiefs of Police, shared this with me the other day. It's one of his, uh, his columns. He's got a, he, he is a prolific writer. I bet he's, uh, he's got some, something published five, six times a week. This is the headline, Obama gives Muslim refugees priority over homeless military vets. Again, we have problems at home. Why don't we address those first? What is it about, and this is a message for you lefties, you scream bigotry, you scream hate, what is it? What, why do you hate America's homeless veterans? Obama and his minions, he writes, are in the process of calculating how many refugees fleeing the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, ISIS, will be brought to U.S. communities, with some claiming as many as 70,000 will be the start of the U.S. program. Could be 100,000, according to uh, Scary John Kerry. The plan expected to include housing, food, clothing, health care, and other necessities, which will be waiting for the arrival of those fleeing war-torn Syria and Iraq. Unfortunately, he writes, Americans who served in Iraq or Afghanistan or both do not have the benefits being afforded to the Muslim, the Muslim migrants or refugees. The veterans who are homeless in America, between 130,000 and 200,000, are between one-fourth and one-fifth of all homeless people. Almost half a million veterans are struggling with paying their rents and are at risk of ending up on the streets and homeless. And winter is coming. So, my friends... And you folks on the left, I know you're not friendly at all. The question is, it's a very simple one, what is your priority in this situation? These veterans put on a uniform, and a great many of them went overseas, and they got shot at, they got dinged up. Some of them lost limbs. Some of them were traumatized by the experience. And you know what the attitude is of this pro-refugee center group? So what? Big deal. There was a congressman once who was of the same mindset, fellow traveler, and during a, during a public meeting, he shouted down a veteran saying, service in the PTA is more important than service in the military, and that's what we have going on here with this group. I've got more on this coming up. I wanted to mention uh, one of our favorite, uh, favorite what we call uh, businesses, medical practice, actually. One of our favorites here at News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. That's Mott Harrison Audiology. Dr. Christine Pickup, in fact, was in the studio with us on Monday. Some of you had a chance to hear her. The office located in Rupert, Idaho, 1218 9th, uh, 1218 9th Street, and that's Unit 2, just in case you know, you're looking. Telephone number 208-312-0957, MottHarrisonAudiology.com. Are you on medication for high blood pressure or a diuretic? These medications can affect your hearing. Hearing health is a reflection of your overall health. As she said the other day on air, it's a holistic. That is your, your totality of everything going on inside you. When you come in for a free wellness hearing screening at Mont Harrison Audiology, Dr. Pickup will review your medications and also discuss ways to protect your hearing in the future. There's a story today, speaking of people who, who may come to this country, that newspaper that I was ma- mentioning earlier, Pravda on the Snake River, it has a story about a man who has been arrested by local police. He's accused of stalking a woman who he met on an online dating service. He's accused of threatening to rape her and kill her, and according to the police report, he poisoned her dogs with antifreeze. Now, this is not a very nice fellow. And it's a long story detailing just, I mean, the abuse that this woman put up with the last couple of months is just insane. 
I, you know, and, and it took a while for police to gather evidence on the guy, but when they got him, it looks like they've got him dead to rights. We'll have to let a jury decide on that. But I'm reading this story, and I'll tell you what, every time I read a story like this, I looked at the, la- the last name of the guy. Well, actually, the guy's names, all of his names. But the last name, I thought, was somewhat of a key to this. As a reader, and I, I told the publisher of that very newspaper a couple of weeks ago, I said, as a reader, and I don't think I'm alone, when I'm reading this, I'm wondering to myself, is this guy here legally? Now, that's a simple question for a reporter to ask, right? In fact, when they did their big piece about how Jerome is being wonderfully transformed into a new Latin America, they they interviewed a number of people who who came there in the dark of night. One of them even admits that. She said, well, I I arrived here in the dark of night and then got up the next morning and thought the town was ugly. (laughs) Well, probably a town site prettier than where she came from. But I said to him, how come nobody bothered to ask? Well, that wasn't the focus of our story. In other words... We don't want to infer or imply, you know, that might mean that these people broke the law coming here. Well, yes, but if it's true. So here you have a fellow who is accused, he, he, accused of pouring antifreeze into bowls and giving it to the woman's two dogs. Then he is accused of peeking at her windows, climbing over her back fence, sending her rude, nasty text messages from six or seven different tel- telephones, always moving from one telephone number to the other so he could continue to do it. And I mean, these were just downright nasty, mean, and threatening. So I'm asking the question, and I think it's a simple question to ask. Is he an illegal immigrant? Are we faced with a similar situation that nearly got out of hand like the one in San Francisco? Why won't your local newspaper Tell us. 824. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 at newsradio1310.com. Should mention that's News Radio 1310 KLIX, just in case, you know, some of you may have forgotten. 825 46. And if you'd like to reach our program today, you can reach me at 736 0300. 736 0300. Here's a question for you. When we were listening to Paul Weston earlier in the program, and he was talking about what Europe really gave to the world. And and Europe gave a great many things to the world. I don't know about Spain, though, but let's ask about cultures south of the border versus our culture, which came down, handed to us from England. And if you look around the world, you see Canada, Australia, New Zealand. You see the uh, the British Isles. pains me to say that sometimes, considering Ireland is considered when when you bring that up. But the English even left them some very good things, too, as well, parliamentary democracy and the like. If you look at all of the advances that have happened in the English-speaking world, because language is really culture, and you compare those to what have happened in other parts of the world, did did anyone in the Muslim world come up with a polio vaccine? How about anybody in the Latin world? Okay. Did anyone in the Muslim world send astronauts to the moon? How about in the Latin world? Okay. Okay. Did, did anyone come up with a system of cancer centers across the United States that can perhaps prolong or even save people who would have been dead 20 years ago? Did that happen in the Muslim world? All right. How about the Latin world? Okay. Now, you can scream and yell and say, well, that's a narrow view. It's ethnocentric. It's bigoted. It's racist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what if it's the truth? Seriously, what if this is actually the truth of how the world actually works? And if our culture has come up with all of these great, and it's probably because of the systems we put in place. And, and, well, up until 50 years ago, we allowed capitalism to run its course, and we rewarded people for intellectual property, and they were able to create, and they were able to come up with just fantastic things. I mean, the inventions and the things that that the English-speaking world and you could probably throw in Germany and, you know, in certain parts of Scandinavia. I say certain. They've gone way down that regulatory path since then. Fact of the matter is, if you take a look at it, the world is a, is a much better place today. Whether or not, and, and, you know, lefty will say, well, those colonial masters, they went into India and they went across Asia and into Africa. And look at all the terrible things they did. Well, yes. But where were those cultures when these first explorers arrived? And, and, you know, if you talk to us, I had a couple of really good friends in college who were from India. One of them actually shared an apartment with me for a while. 
He liked to sit around in the afternoon, drink his tea, and he loved to watch cricket. But he would even come out and tell you that the English control of his country, at least for, you know, about 100 years, maybe 90 or so, had actually been a very strong unifying force. And that modern India today, which is a booming economy, probably comes from the fact that it had adopted many of those ideals that came to it from what was, I know a mother country sounds a little bit to the left when they hear that mother country. They think, oh, good golly, that's mean and nasty. And, and, and just fact of the matter is, most of, you know, people can say, well, there was this massacre at Amritsar and there was this massacre in Dublin. And there, yeah, mistakes are made by people. We're human beings. We're not perfect. Ben Carson said the same thing during an interview the other day. I thought it was just spot on. My point being that we have many of the great things we have today when it comes to medicine, when it comes to technology, really when it just comes to, and if we still have it, I think it's been diminished somewhat or greatly, but we had freedom of movement too as well. All of these things and the rule of law that was passed on from English common law that really was the, uh, the, the umbrella protecting it all. And now we somehow think that we have to tear this down and, and just give it away. In other words, to make somebody, some self-loathing newspaper editor, feel better about himself. I'm sorry. If you want to do that, go throw yourself in the ocean or something and, you know, eliminate the pestilence you think you are. But the rest of us, we want to get on with our lives. And we want to continue the progress that we had been making until this absolutely asinine politically correct view of the world took hold. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, 830 and 46. We have a guest coming up in about 10 minutes joining us from the Boy Scouts of America.